In section 10 of chapter 1, we're going to be discussing 2 by 2 matrices. This is another technique on solving systems of equations. However, I would like to kind of put a little asterisk next to this. This is a technique on solving matrices. This is not going to be how you will actually use matrices going forward. This you can kind of think as the tutorial level. We are just introducing the topic, teaching you how to recognize, transform into and out of matrices and how to do basic manipulations. Matrices are designed for one, more complex problems and two, more simplified processes. This is just an introduction to it. So if it feels awkward and it feels like substitution and elimination are faster, probably because they are, that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this lesson is to prepare you for when you do this again in pre-calculus and they start going over matrices, you'll have the foundation already set. You'll be able to recognize it a little bit better. I am going to solve this system. Notice it's the same system twice. I'm going to solve it first using elimination, then I'm gonna do matrices. That way we can have a direct comparison between the two techniques. Because spoiler alert, they're pretty much the same technique. All right, so I have five X plus two Y equals negative four and three Y equals five minus two X. If I wanna use elimination, I need both equations to be in standard form. So I am first going to add the 2x to the other side for the blue equation. That will leave me with the first equation I'm not touching, so 5x plus 2y equals negative 4. And then the blue equation will turn into 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. At this point in time, I want I want to make sure that the leading coefficients in front of one of the variables, the x's and the y's, are opposites. I want like a 7x and a negative 7x, or a 13y and a negative 13y. So I can either turn the 5x and the 2x both into 10x, one being positive, one being negative, that's fine. Or I can turn the 2y and the 3y into a 6y and a negative 6y. I'm going to choose that option because 6 is smaller than 10. So I'm going to take this first equation and multiply it by 3, multiply the second equation by 2. I need one of them to be negative. I'll make the top one negative. Once I do that, I'm going to get a new system. I'm going to get negative 15x minus 6y is equal to negative 12. And then I'm going to get 4x plus 6y is equal to 10. Is it? You're right. You're right. Thank you. Next, I'm going to take those two equations and add them together. Negative 6y and positive 6y eliminate. Negative 15x and positive 4x is going to give me negative 11x, and that will be equal to 22. Divide both sides by the negative 11. And that'll give me x is equal to negative 2. So I found my x value. To find the y value, I take that x value and plug it into any equation I want. It does not matter which. I'm going to substitute it into the blue one, the original blue one, because the y value is almost all by itself. So that's going to give me 3y is equal to 5 minus 2 times my x value of negative 2. Solve this. 3y equals 5 plus 4. 3y equals 9. Divide to 3 to both sides. And we would get y equals 3. If you leave your answer like this, you are not done, you are not finished, because we need a coordinate. The coordinate is the x value comma the y value. And this is where those two lines would intersect each other. This is how we solve the system using elimination. I'm now gonna do the exact same thing utilizing matrices.
I'm going to need a little bit more space, so I'm going to move the fill up. All right. Just like elimination, in order to use matrices, both equations must be in standard form. So I'm going to have to follow that same process of adding the 2x to both sides. When I do that, I'm going to get 5x plus 2y equals negative 4. <clears throat> and I'm going to get negative 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. So it still starts the same. Here's where we deviate off the path. We next need to convert that system into what is called matrix notation. It would be positive 2x. I don't know why I put it negative. Here's how you write this as a matrix. You're going to put a bracket. Give yourself enough space to write two rows of numbers. The first row of numbers is just going to be the leading coefficients of the red variables. So it's going to be the 5 and the positive 2. Then we put one of two things. It depends on what kind of a mathematician you have as a teacher. You are either going to put a vertical dotted line or just a vertical line, just a straight line. I personally like doing just a vertical line because dotted lines are annoying to write. And then we're going to put the number at the very end, our solution, right here, and we close the bracket. Remember to leave enough row for the blue line, or the blue numbers. Then we do the exact same thing with the blue numbers. 2, positive 3, positive 5. And that is a matrix. It is just the leading coefficients for the variables. The very, very first row is the first equation. The second row is the second equation. The first column are the coefficients in front of the x values. The second column are all of the leading coefficients in front of the y values. The third column is the solution column. Now, if you kind of take a meta perspective of elimination, the technique we did on the left, what we're ultimately doing was trying to get these two numbers to be the opposite. This is going to be the same thing. I want these two numbers to be opposites. I want them to be a 6 and a negative 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this into row 1 times negative 3 and row 2 times 2. That'll get me a new matrix. That new matrix, the first row, the 5, the 2, and the negative 4, I'm multiplying all three of them by negative 3. And that leaves me with negative 15, negative 6, vertical line, 12. Hey, what do you know? This whole multiplication process and these numbers right here, they kind of look familiar. Then I'm going to multiply the second row by 2, 3, and 5. That's going to give me a 4, a 6, and a 10. And that row should also look familiar. Next, I'm going to replace one of my rows. Typically, it's the second row. I'm going to replace one of my rows, I'm going to replace row 2, with the sum of the other, uh, with the first row and the second row, row 2 plus row 1. So I'm not doing anything to the first row, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. And then the second row, I'm going to add the red row to it, negative 15 and a positive 4. That would give me an 11. The red 6 and the blue 6 would give me 0. The red 12 and the blue 10 would get me 22. Oh, I forgot the 11 is negative. Next, once we get one of these row, sorry, one of these columns and one of the rows to be a 0, we want the other number to become a 1. So my next step is I'm going to take row 2 and divide it 
by negative 11. When I do that, again, I'm not touching the first row, so I'm just copying and pasting it. Second row, I'm dividing by negative 11. That purple negative 11 divided by negative 11 is 1. 0 divided by negative 11 is 0. 22 divided by negative 11 is negative 2. Once this occurs, where you have a 1, a 0, and then a number, this is called echelon form. Sometimes it's referred to as a reduced echelon form. We're not fully there yet, but we're most of the way there. Once you get that to occur, wherever the 1 occurs, it's in the x column. That means x has to equal this number. x equals negative 2. And now we've basically gone through this entire process and we're now at this stage right here. The rest is the same. I take that negative 2 and plug it into one of my two equations, which is what I did here. So if I wanted to, I could just copy and paste that step. So I'm doing the same thing. I take that value I got, the negative 2, plug it into one of my equations, I plug it into the blue equation, get my coordinate of negative 2 comma 3. And just to reiterate one final time, you might look at this and go, Mr. Silva, elimination seems like it's easier, faster, and makes more sense. Why are we doing elimination? Or sorry, why are we doing matrices? Matrices are not designed to do this stuff. Matrices are designed for much more complicated and larger problems. But just like learning to ride a bike, we got to learn training wheels first. Because matrices expands into a very big, broad, and complicated section of mathematics. I want to first teach you how to transform into a matrix and how to do basic rudimentary addition, subtraction, and multiplication inside of matrices before we move on to things like finding the determinant of a matrix, finding an augmented matrix. Before you jump into that heavy content, you need to feel comfortable with the formatting first. That's all this and the next lesson are, is getting comfortable with formatting. The more complicated stuff involving matrices, we will cover next year.